Hi guys, this is a video on rates of reactions. This topic is found in C2 chapter 4 and in this video we're going to be looking at the commercial importance of speeding up chemical reactions, collision theory in terms of particles and we're going to be looking at the five factors that affect the rate of reactions. Rates of reactions are important because time is an important entity especially in industry because time is money. So scientists in this field discover ways of increasing the rates of reactions so that you spend less time making something and the overall benefits of this is that it reduces the cost of labor, reduces wear and tear on equipment and reduces energy costs. So the first factor we're going to be looking at is temperature. Now what temperature does to particles is that it makes them move faster and this does two things. Number one, it increases the frequency of collision so the particles are more likely to collide and also if the temperature is high enough, the particles have enough kinetic energy so that when they collide, a reaction takes place. So here's an example, I've got A plus B reacting to give us our product C. Now this energy over here is also known as the activation energy which is the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to take place. So our second factor is concentration. Now in chemistry, concentration is related to the amount of particles in a given volume. So here I've got two boxes with exactly the same volume. So if I have one of them with less amounts of particles, so here on the left, then I've got low concentration. However, if I have the exact same volume but I add more particles, then the concentration has increased. Now it's important to realize that the particles are not gaining more kinetic energy by increasing the concentration. You are only increasing the frequency of the collisions by increasing the concentration. It's a common exam mistake students make, so don't make that mistake. So our third factor is pressure. Now pressure can be used to increase the rate of reaction of gases and not for solids or liquids. So here I've got a container and low pressure the particles are more spaced out therefore the frequency of collisions is lower and this lowers the rate of reaction. If I squeeze these particles down they're more jumbled together and they're much closer which means that the frequency of collisions greater and therefore the rate of reaction is going to be greater as well. So our fourth factor is using a catalyst. Now I've got Bob over here to help me explain this. Now what Bob wants to try and do is to push this ball across this slope over here and let it roll down. I don't know why Bob would do that, he's a bit weird. But anyway, so he's going to push it over here. Once the ball gets to about this point then he can stop pushing it and the ball will just roll down. Now the energy required to get the ball from over here to up here is called the activation energy. Now if you use a catalyst you can lower this activation energy which means that Bob is now much more happier because he's using less energy to get the ball to this point over here. Now the way a catalyst works is that it lowers the activation energy by providing an alternative pathway and this makes the reaction more favorable. Okay, so our final factor is surface area. So here I've got a block of sodium hydroxide or a cube. This is going to react with any acid. And I want you to look at this block and imagine it in 3D. You can see that it's got six uh, faces. Okay, you can cut this up into four smaller cubes. Each one of these cubes now has six faces. So you've got four times six, you've got 24 faces in total. The surface area has increased, which means that the rate of reaction is also going to increase. So in an exam you could be asked to calculate the rate of a reaction from either a graph or a set of data. So here I've got an example reaction, magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid to give us MgCl2 and hydrogen gas. I'm going to focus on hydrogen gas here as the product of interest. So if I was to plot a graph it looks something like this. So as time goes on the amount of hydrogen gas produced increases and eventually the reaction slows down about here and it completely stops at this point okay and this is because all the reactants have been used up now if you were to calculate rate of reaction from this graph you would choose two points in the graph so here I've got point 1 and point 2 
you will put this into a really simple equation. So you've got 0.2 take away 0.1. Divide that by the time for 0.2, which is T2, take away the time for 0.1, which is T1. Divide those two numbers together, and you will get your answer in centimeters cubed per second. A second way of working out the rate of reaction is by looking at the rate at which a particular reactant is used up. So let's look at magnesium for example. As the reaction proceeds, the mass of magnesium decreases and eventually all the magnesium is completely used up at this point over here. So how do we measure the rate of reaction from this graph? Well, it's exactly the same as the previous example. You pick two points, point 0.1 and point 0.2, put them into this equation over here and you will get your answer in grams per second. Now this is how fast magnesium gets used up and not how fast it is produced. Okay, so that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also don't forget that there are some exam questions in the description box with the marks scheme included.